told you I felt a little nervous today, right? Right? Amen. So what if I came to you today and told you I'm not prepared? Yeah, well, we can all give a testimony, right? So if we would have testimony service today, that would be all right, right? Yes. So I would preach. Oh, what if I came to you and told you I'm not prepared? And I would say, well, how are you teaching today? Huh? Brother Balsey, how about you teaching today? What will some of us say? Huh? Some of us would honestly say what? <laughs> we would honestly say I'm not prepared. Wouldn't we? I didn't have time to prepare. <laughs> well, the, me and the Lord, well, we've been, we've been, he just been, I've been writing notes, just writing stuff, and got three or four sermons the other morning. Didn't really feel anything for today. And he gave me a dream, though. Just a quick little dream. This is where we are. I will come to you and say, I'm not prepared to preach today or teach today. Boy, you would just you think, what in the world? You're a really pastor. You're, you're the leader. You should be prepared. You should be the one praying. You should be the one, you know, reading your Bible. You should be the one digging stuff out for us, right? You would hold me accountable. Uh, well, he kind of showed me a thing of ready or not. And I saw myself standing right here talking about, about not being prepared. I'm off my game. You know, life hit me this week as well as life hit you this week. And I worked my job. I'm standing here twisting wires and I'm sweating to beat the man. I'm just standing there. Where where is you out? You know, I come home, I'm tired. Wife had a battle with an issue and with her body this week and sick. And, you know, and just, the grass needed mowed, horses needed fed, the dogs needed fed. You know, things life. Wrecked the work van this week. You know, just, you know, dang, it's crazy. Crazy. And that's where life gets us, right? Life gets us right down to, boy, I don't know if I want to do this. I just don't know if I can do this. I, you know, we start questioning ourselves. So the Lord just kind of quickened my mind. You ever play that game tag? You count. Hey, I'm going to count. Ten, nine, eight, seven. You get down to one. Ready or not, here I come. Right? You ever play that game? The flashlight tag at night. I remember hiding in, the, hiding in my dad's cornfield. Sorry about your cornfield. This cornfield got blown over the other night during the storm. I remember hiding in my dad's cornfield. A flash like that. Ready or not, here I come. And I would say today is, is a different message for today. I'm not jumping and shouting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to you from my heart. Today. I was driving the other day, 
and through another town, not Washington Mountain or Turbinville. I was driving through this town. This town needs a church. This community has got a high school, it's got a school system. You know, it needs to have a church. Look into my mind, ready or not. And I watch people. I watch people and I watch people. And so in this dream, I just just quick, quick couple second dream of not being prepared. Not coming here with a sermon because I'm coming here with a lot of excuses that I would have. I could justify it. It's like we all justify ourselves at some point in our lives. Say that, well, Lord, I'm kind of busy. I'm kind of caught up with life. I'm kind of, you know, caught up with my job, kind of caught up with my career. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, boy, I'm right on the edge of this. And, boy, Lord, I'm. I'm going to give you a couple minutes today, but I'm going to spend hours over here. How many of you uh, talk about forgetfulness? How many of you make a shopping list when you go shopping? i got to make a shopping list. If I go in there, I guarantee you, I don't care if I do make a shopping list. I don't stick to it. Because when they have cupcakes, three for ten, man, I've got to get my cupcakes. Even though it's not on the list. Or ice cream, two for five. I gotta get the ice cream. You know, I gotta wow. My Oreo cookies are on special. Yeah. It's not on the list. But we write these lists out, the Christmas list. Oh yeah. That's right, Christmas is coming, ready or not. We gotta start making a list. Okay, what are we gonna get someone Christmas gifts this year? We start, we 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 get these lists. Why? So we don't forget. Because you know we're 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 getting to that point in our age and life that you know life just you know we 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 thought cell phones and iPads and all this new technology was gonna make life simpler. Has it? Really has it? If anything, it's crowded our lives to the point where, man, we think, where were we before cell phones? So I wrote this thought down today. Forgetfulness doesn't happen when it's a normal part of our lives. Because why? Because it's habitual. Because of muscle memory. I, 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 there's many times that we will we will leave the house, and my wife says I got to go to Dollar General, but I know that we got to go to Bloomsburg. I'll go out to the end of the road and I'll make a left hand turn. Where are you going? I got to go to. Oh, I forgot. And now I drove a mile and a half. Or I'll come down here to the intersection. We got we got to make a stop before we come into church, and I'll drive right through the intersection. Where are you going? I only drove a mile and a half. I forgot why, but it's not something normal. Ready or not, when I allow myself to allow. The good things of the Lord in my life, just like our slogan is, it's a journey into a relationship with Jesus Christ. There's a lot of things y'all are learning right now, aren't you? And it's a journey. We take the good with the bad, and the bad with the good, and the ugly. And, you know, it's just, you know, it, it can be messy at times, and it can be awesome at times. But we allow ourselves. That room of grace, and that's where I, I, I feel we are in the church age and, and uh, everything, where we, we're, we're in that age of grace that, okay, 
Yes, Lord, life hit me hard today. But God, you're still on the throne. I'm still a part of your body. I'm still in this relationship with you. I'm not giving up on you because you have not given up on me. Ready or not. So, with that muscle memory, uh, I was alluded, you know, kind of clued in on this. Uh, apparently, I, I, I still got a rib that's out uh, for some reason when I go to the chiropractor and he tries to work it back into place. It pops out after a while and kind of gives me a side stitch and kind of, you know, he said, Mark, he says, that muscle memory. I said, well, wait, you think I ought to get it massaged? Yeah, you need to loosen it up and try to keep it, try to keep it relaxed. And you got to get this rib in place because that muscle wants to pull it back into where it wants to be. <clears throat> and so when I, when I look at this today and I, I see that there's a world that is, that is vying for our souls. There is a world that is vying for our lives. There is a world that is vying for our flesh and blood. But at the same time, there is a world that is vying for our soul and for our spiritualness. And for a relationship with him that we're, we are going to have to understand that one day, it's going to come to a point where we got to understand one day this flesh is going to go back to the dust of the ground, but my soul is going to live forever one day, ready or not. So, I think it's very close. <clears throat> what were we so preoccupied with this week? Can you look back over your week and think, well, man, yeah, wow, yeah, this week has really threw me off. And so I reminded of a scripture, Matthew chapter 25. I'm not really going to be heavy on you with this today. I want to enlighten us to something that, that the Lord just kind of threw me in. That no matter what life throws at us, I need to be prepared. As a Boy Scout, you know, you know they, got, they got that motto. You know, they're always being prepared. Amen, Elizabeth. Praise God. Thank God she said amen. Or first eight men in church. But uh, you know, they, they're always always being prepared. Got that carrying that pocket knife and just knowing what to do in, in, in certain situations. When we walk into an emergency room, that emergency room has all kind of machines and stuff sitting around that they are prepared for the worst. They got doctors and nurses and lab technicians and specialists on call and they're, they're, they're ready to take care of whatever the need is. And I believe in our walk with God that there, there's times when, man, we need the paddles taken to it. We need an infusion of, of uh, some goodness and some mercy and some compassion and some gladness and some joy. Why? Because life just wants to throw us down and beat us up. Ready or not. Matthew chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So here we are. Ready or not. Um, I, I think my mind's been so occupied and preoccupied with what is happening in our world, and as far as the world view, what is happening in the United States, and, and how we are being affected by by everything in the media, whether the media is so biased or not biased, or you know whether they're for or against whatever, and uh, how they are projecting this pandemic. Just seems like you know. Seems like we're we're being closed in. Just seems like we're just being suffocated a little bit and trying to uh, 
restrict us because I know that there were some churches down in California that they were told, hey, you go to church, you can't, you can't sing. They don't want you singing in church out in California in some spots. And so we're, we're dealing with that. And, uh, you know, the, the restrictions that, that are happening in our liberties, uh, I never thought we would see the day where we are today. So, ready or not, even in the midst of all that is happening in our world today, we all know what it feels like to not be ready, right? We know that uh, those that's gone through college and Knew that you know you had a paper due. How long did you put off to, to to do the paper? How long did you put off to study for the test? And you know how long did you put off and just hang with a with with your friends? And say, oh yeah, I got this. Yeah, we all know what it's like to not be ready. And so some of the elements here of of what has taken place in the scripture here, we we see that there are five of the versions that didn't take any oil and, and uh, they just had what was in their lamps and then we have those that had what was in their lamps but then they took a little extra. They were trying to be prepared for whatever may happen down the road. And we know if we would go on down through the scripture that the bridegroom delayed is coming and the bridegroom arrived, uh, arrival was announced and you know they, they, they trim their lamps. Well, then the, the other foolish persons, they, they found that the oil was running out. And, you know, they asked the wise, well, hey, could you share with us? Well, they didn't have enough to give to them. And, and so they refused to give them any oil. So the foolish persons, they went out to try and buy some oil. And, and then when they came back, and uh, the, the, the door was shut. And so we see that the main thing here is that what we got to understand and to have clear in our mind and our thought is that there is a need in our life today, in our walk with God today, for a constant watchfulness in our walk with God. We have got to be aware of the devices of the devil. We've got to be aware of what is happening in our surroundings Uh you know, just what happened with me the other day, and just a split second, I came over the rise. We just came out of a construction zone, and somebody decided to stop and make a left-hand turn into a into a field that you know we had no clue. And there were three of us, and, and I didn't hit my brakes on time, and I slid and and uh, hit the person in front of me. They hit the person in front of them, and just a chain reaction just happened at a split second. Just at a moment when you took your thought off the process of driving and you thought about something else and all of a sudden, boom, right there it was in front of me. And so there is a need for constant watchfulness. Well, how do we constantly watch? It's having that constant walk with God. Creating it as a habit in our lives. Uh, you know, we, we all have our times when we get up in the morning. We all have our times of, uh, I'm sure you have your own set time of personal devotion, your own set time of uh, time you talk with the Lord, you pray, you read your Bible, and uh, times of when you do your own personal fasting. I'm, I'm sure you do all of this. Amen? Amen. Man, I got it. But it's those times what, what helps us to remain watchful because. It builds a sensitivity to his spirit and it builds a, an, an eye for what is happening in our world around us and how it's trying to pull us and try to buy for our time and buy for our strength, even our, our physical strength. I mean, the devil wants you to be wore out. He wants you to be tired. He wants you to be frustrated. He wants you to be mad and angry and you know, it's all those things of the flesh. Because we don't know the, the, the moment or the time. You know, one translation says that we there is a need of being prepared.
prepared at all times. You know, when I travel, uh, go on a trailer, I make sure I got a, you know, extra blocks to jack up the trailer in case I have a blowing out tire because I, I experienced it a, a few times. So I got to know, okay, what do I need to carry with me? I need to have that lug wrench. I need to have this and that and flares and, you know, and, and, and devices like that. I got to be prepared for the worst. So what Jesus was trying to show us here is that, hey, we need to be prepared and to have a constant watchfulness because those those versions that the, the, the wise version, you know, yes, they both had their lamps burning. But the wise ones, they, they took a little extra just in case. You just never know. Also, Paul said this in, 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 to the uh, Thessalonica church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He said, but other times in the season, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Well, we're prepared, right? We got lights on at night, right? We got outside lights. I mean, the first time when we moved out in the... From, from being in town to out here where we are, we went to bed. I thought, oh my word, it's dark out here. Well, what did you expect? I got away from the street lights. I got away from the street noises and things. And, Man, it's dark out here. Well, it is dark when you close your eyes. You don't know, right? Man. For when they shall say peace and say peace, and a sudden destruction cometh upon them that travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But yea, ye brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief, because we know. You are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the light, night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Be prepared. Know what is happening in our world. Understand that, hey, God can come at any moment, any time, any second. Yes, we can make plans for the future. I got plans. I got things on the horizon that I, I want to see accomplished. But on my daily walk with God, Lord, God, I, I know, Lord, I, I need to be saved. Lord, I know my eyes need to stay focused on you. Lord, I know my ears need to you know, get out of tune with the things that are happening in the world. I can't allow my mind and my thought process to, to come on to the things of the world. But Lord, I need to stay focused on you today. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Talking about Sardis. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even as Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches today. He that overcometh. Overcome what? Overcome life that tries to so crowd us in. So boxes us, trying to, trying to box us in to the point that, hey, it's hard and I'm tired. I don't feel like I'm raising my hands today. That's why I say our praise and our worship has got to come with us as we come to church. Not, we don't praise and worship just because it's on the schedule to praise and worship. But I'm praising and worshiping God. Why? Because he's counting me worthy. Why? Because it's grace. Why? Because of his salvation. Why? Because of the plan of salvation that I'm allowed to be a part of. Why? Because he has touched my body. He has delivered me. He has been good to me today. So, hey, I'm going to overcome this thing. I'm going to be an overcomer. And that's what I want you to be today. I want you.
want you to overcome. I want you to be ready. I want everyone here under the sound of my voice and even on the on the website today. I want us to be ready today. <clears throat> Peter was reminding those Christians that he talked with to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. Don't allow things in this life hamper our growth. I've made it in my mind. My goal for the remainder part of this year, I think I got seven or eight books that I want to finish reading. From David Bernard, other authors that have been suggested for me and for others. And, uh, I, I think it's just awesome. And it's, it's just those things that, that, that's going to help me to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. I'm not going to allow things in life to try and hamper me and try to hinder my growth. And that's why we're out there weeding. That's why we're out there wiring the garden. We want that garden to grow. That's the same way as in our spirits today, church. We need to have our spirits to grow in the knowledge and in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a journey that we are in, and it's a day-by-day -day process, amen, that we are walking with him. And I know that, hey, I know that as I live according to his word today, he said this, Peter said this, looking forward and hasting unto the coming day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace and without spot and blameless. Be diligent. Stay on guard. Don't allow that what is happening in our world, what's happening on social media, what's happening on the news networks, don't get so caught up in that stuff that's going to Throw you off your guard. Right. Stay on guard. I, I, I think of a boxer. When he's in that boxing ring, he's got to keep that, 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 that front hand up. He's got to keep his, his guard up. Why? Because if he lets that down for a minute, his opponent's going to sneak one in on him. So I'm here today as your pastor today. Ready or not. We got to keep our guard up. Even though we think that, hey, the Lord's not coming for 30 years, I still got to keep my guard up. Yeah. I still got to be watchful. I still got to be prepared. I, I still got to have diligence in my walk with God. You see, it was those because, yes, those were the wise ones because. They lived accordingly to um, being prepared. Those that were foolish, well, they weren't prepared. And so, bringing this around to a close today, we got to notice one thing: is that the foolish versions they had oil in their lamps, just like the wise ones did. So at one time, they had their relationship with Jesus Christ. They were prepared. They were diligent. They, had, they, they met all the criteria. They were doing everything right, doing everything well. They, 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 looked, you know, they all looked the same, had the same lamp, had the same water, right? But we see that there were those that made preparations. But they foolishly trusted in what they had done in the past. We cannot rest on our laurels today, church. We've got to be diligent. We've got to be watchful. Because ready or not. I can't rely on my prayers from yesterday to get me through today. I can't
can't rely on my experience that I had at an old revival tabernacle to get me through my experiences here today. I can't rely on my past experiences at church camp last year. We didn't have church camp this year. But I need to have a walk. Why? There it is. I got to be prepared. I got to be watchful. I got to be diligent. Because it's something like that. Church camp, youth convention, <laughs> men's conference, taken away. What am I going to do? Am I going to fall apart? That's what the devil wants. But I'm going to be watching. I'm not going to wrestle my Lord, but I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to seek the face of God. I'm still going to worship Him. You see, when we look at these wise versions, they had to put that extra oil on their lamps to make it through. What we got to understand here is that they didn't share their oil. So at the same thing here with you and I today, we cannot impart what salvation we have received to someone else. I cannot give you my salvation. So in other words today, just because you're my buddy, just because you're my friend, you're not saved. Just because my mom and dad is saved doesn't mean I'm saved. Just because we go to a church that preaches about salvation, that doesn't make me saved. But as those five foolish men, they had to get it for themselves. There is so much in this that it becomes a personal issue for you and I. Amen. That we cannot think that we are saved by association. Each of us must have our own experience with Jesus Christ. Right. We've got to have a relationship with him. We've got to have those times and those moments with him, whether they're up or whether they're down, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Amen. But I've got to have my relationship with him in order to have my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Ready or not. <clears throat> So, bring this to a close. Be careful not to let this world to preoccupy you so much through its lusts, through its worldly concerns, that it steers us off of the path that we let up in being diligent. You know, it's like those guys that, that race races for NASCAR or those guys that do the quarter mile. Man, they when when that light goes green, man, they put that foot on the floorboard and they don't let it go until they get over the, the line. Because the moment they let up, their opponent's gonna take over. I cannot let up in my journey and my walk with God. But I need to be number one, step fast in prayer. For in prayer, we naturally maintain an attitude of watchfulness. For in prayer, we can assure that we will be kind and worthy and be diligent to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. My closing verse of scripture today. Let's thank you. <clears throat> Peter reminding those that he was talking with Second Peter chapter 1, he said, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember these things. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them. See, that was my issue today. We all know this. I'm thinking, Lord, do I really got to say this today? But I got to bring this in remembrance. It means as long as I am in this tabernacle.
tabernacle or in the flesh to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Ready or not? I'm putting us in remembrance today that we are fighting the good fight of faith. That we're on the, the winning side today, church. Amen. That, that knowing this glorious gospel and knowing that I've been baptized in the name of Jesus and knowing that I've received the gift of the Holy Ghost by speaking in other tongues. Uh, amen. As the Spirit of God gives us utterance, uh, I know that I'm on the winning side and I'm going to give diligence to my walk with God. If he has blessed me once, he's going to bless me again. Because the praise singers come today. Ready or not, you need to examine yourself. Am I prepared? Am I ready? Not because my spouse or my cousin or my uncle or my grandparents or my great grandparents have been in the. No, am I ready? You know, it's like standing there at the lunchroom and knowing that I got to give my ticket. You know, I, I did a I did a thing when I was a kid. My mom and dad would give me money, and, and then I could get my lunch tickets for the month. I thought, hey, I'm going to take that money, and I'm going to go down here to the store there on the corner of Turbot Avenue when it was middle school, and, and I'm going to buy me some bubble gum, and I'll have enough money to, to buy my lunch the rest of the month. I just want some bubble gum. I want some of that, that, that long stick of great bubble gum, you know? They used to sell. I said, yeah, I'm going to give me a couple then. Well, yeah, come the end of the month. You know, here I am. I'm not, I'm, I'm not eating lunch. My buddies, classmates were. They didn't have anything that, that they could give me. I thought, well, Mark, I guess you learned a horror lesson now. You ain't going to do that again, are you? Nope. Every time since then, I bought my lunch tickets. See, i got to get this for myself, church. So let's lift our hands and let's worship the Lord as we sing today. Let's just make sure, God, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not giving up on you because you haven't given up on me. Ready or not. Fire, shut up in my bones. I want the world to know you are with a passion burning deep within, I want the world to know that you live. Jesus, I'm desperate for you. Jesus, I'm hungry for you. Jesus, I'm longing. Spirit, come and move within. 